Hi, in this video, we are going to quickly cover how you can use Replit to quickly deploy and test your full stack application like a production deployment. This is not a sponsored video. I just happen to have a yearly subscription of Replit, which I don't use really much. The reason why I took the subscription is because of the remote ID capability that I wanted to use even when I'm on the move so that I can just build project and I don't have to carry my desktop or heavy uh, MacBook. So I just thought, why not use the free credit that they give every month to actually host your application if you are on their core uh, membership plan. So we can actually use it for production grade deployment without much worry and without much hassle. And that's what I just wanted to quickly cover in this video. So let's go ahead to my desktop and let's do this right now and see how it can be done. So now I am in my desktop and I have already opened the replit.com. So next step, what we will do is we just need to import um, our Next.js project. So that, so in this demo, I'm going to deploy the very Next.js project that we are building as part of the SaaS course. And it's going to be the um, SaaS application that I'm hopefully going to launch in next few days or weeks. Um, but this is still a draft version, but let's see how we can deploy it in Replit and how we can use it. So we'll just create Replit and we'll go to import uh, from GitHub. If you want to use the Replit agent and create your own app, you can do that. And now they are also supporting the Node.js and any JavaScript library based uh, app. So you can directly just describe the app and it will uh, create it. I have already covered a video before how to use the Replit agent and it's very simple and easy. So I leave the link in the description so you can check. But in this case, we're just going to import from GitHub and this is the project that I'm building. So as you know, I have already created an open source version of an YS AI agent or sales agent that called Naughty AI. And now we are building the Naughty AI Pro as part of the SaaS course. So this is what I'm gonna try and deploy in the Replit today. So I'm just gonna select this and uh, just click import from GitHub. Now this is a private project. This is kind of the SaaS product that I am thinking to build uh, in next couple of weeks. Now, once you uh, import that, it will ask you to configure your Ripple. Um, now, this is definitely the run command that will be used to run the app locally, but we are not going to just run it locally. We are going to deploy it as like a production app. So stay tuned and see what I'm doing. Now I'm just gonna do confirm and close. I don't uh, really need anything as such. Now, when you do the first time you have imported that, uh, you would see that this project usually have .env staging and .env example file, but I haven't kept any .env or .env production file. So usually if you want to deploy it in production, uh, I would recommend you to create a .env or .env production file and keep your non-secret configuration file there. But I use a different approach. I don't keep it in .env file, but it's up to you how you want to do it really if you are using the Replit platform. So what I usually do is I create the all of the environment variables, including the secrets as Replit secrets. So if you see here in the left panel, this is the secrets, right? So when you click on secret, there is some so Ripple secrets are the secret that will be used in this particular Ripple or in this particular project. However, what I do is I create the secret as account secret because when you create as account secret, you can actually reuse it in multiple Ripple projects. So that's why I do a few of the secrets maybe used in one uh, project and maybe the other one may be used in another project. So that's why I created as account secret. All I have to do now is just select this Ripple that I need for this project. So I'm just going to select all because I, frankly, I need all of this one. Now you can only copy up to 10 linked secrets. So We'll just copy this once and then we'll select the other ones and then we're going to click this so now as if you see we have all the required secret or rather config as well because not, not all of these are secret we have some api keys and secret which are meant to be secret but then we have some url stuff that may not need to be a secret so we have all of this so i think we are ready so first thing first that you need to do after you import the project is just hit run so as you run it what it will do it will just try to run it in the local id as you'll run it on your vs code environment so uh, that's what it will try to do just to see whether it's working as expected uh, before we go ahead and try it in and deploy it like a production application so i'll give it a few minutes 
and I'll just wait for this to be finished. As you can see, there is some in NIEX error. It's not really a big deal as of now. You can just ignore it because I can see that uh, the app is deployed and I'm able to see the front page, which looks nice. Now what we will do, we know that this is almost ready to go and we will now try and go ahead and deploy. Of course, I would recommend you to test everything uh, before you go, but uh, as part of the video, we are not going to do that because I'm anyway doing all the testing in my local environment. So let's try and, and do a deploy. Okay, so we'll click deploy now and then you have uh, multiple options here, but because this is a Next.js website, not a scheduled job or a static website, uh, we will use reserved VM. You can use auto scale. Now auto scale, what can do is it may actually increase the cost of your hosting. In fact, your, in fact, the reserved VM is also a lot more costly than if you just um, buy a server and host it. So I'm not actually recommending you to use uh, the replete reserved VM for deploying uh, the production application. The, the reason is because this charge is really huge. Uh, but if you are someone who want to use managed services and stuff, you can actually go with Replic or, or Replit or Vercel or similar like services. Uh, but I prefer uh, having my own PVM and host my app. So I, I'm actually creating the Coolify tutorial in the parallel, which will show you how to do that as well. This is more sort of showing you how to use Replit deployments, because uh, if you are building a production app, it's really essential that you do not just depend on your local build and local test because local is more sort of development whereas you should also do some kind of staging uh, environment where you actually actually deploy it on some kind of cloud server and test your application before you go and hit to the production and Replit can really be a good choice if you have the Replit subscription because Replit subscription gives you around ten dollar per month in credit to use their um, reserve vm as deployment so I have the Replit Pro plan as I have taken a few months back as I've shown you probably as part of the other video. Uh, so that's why I'm just using Replit. This is more sort of like a staging for me, but I will try and deploy it as a production app so that I know exactly if there is any issue when it comes to the deployment. So I'll just use uh, this uh, domain. Uh, this is also we, comes with Replit, it's free. And then the build command is, of course, it's a Node.js project. So I'm gonna use npm run build. And the run command is npm run dev or npm run prod, whatever you have set in the config file of the Next.js, or of whatever you have uh, set up in the package.json. Now let's go ahead and try uh, deploy it and see if that works or not. I'm gonna close the web view for now. And I'm going to close the secrets as well. And what you can do is just click on this hide log or view log to see the logs when it's being deployed. Now, if you can see the build has failed, although when we have run it in the local uh, run or local build that was all successful and it came up with the page. So this is the reason why I said to use some kind of uh, provider like Replit to do the deployment for your staging or just before you just before you go to production because that will give you some insights about uh, production standard build and what i mean by production standard build is if you see here it's just saying that uh, it cannot find the fs module or the file system module now it's not that the module is not there the module is there but i think i know the issue the issue is if we go to this path so if you see we are using the file system module here now, issue is because it's a Next.js, so Next.js app has a client part and then the server part. So it is better to use the backend to access uh, the server and then all the file system around it rather than the front end is trying to do that and that they don't allow you. So what I have to do is I have to now make some changes so that I don't use the file system uh, and try and do the redeploy. But this is what I wanted to show you that please uh, make use of Replit or similar kind of deployment once before you go to production because that will give you so much more insights about how ready is your code is before you hit to the production. Okay, because this is actually trying to do the optimized production build. Whereas when we have used this run button, that you have seen the, as the web view, let me actually open the web view. It is It will work because this is more sort of a development environment as it is running. And that's why it is working. There is no error as such. And I can actually access, uh, I think it is coming on the blog 
uh, blog post let me see if it's loading the blog post properly or not in the local environment yeah as you can see it's loading the blogs and everything properly so yeah it's everything works in the local but it fails to even build at the production so please make sure uh, you do that and use these features so let me go ahead pause the video and fix the issue uh, I, I think it will take some time and then i'll come back when it's fixed okay so i think i have fixed this now um, I'm just gonna do like git commit. I'm gonna do it directly on the develop branch, which I really don't do usually. So you should always do it in a custom branch and raise a pull request so that you have a track. But uh, for now, I'm just doing it on the development because, well, or the develop branch. Now what we'll do, we'll again go back to the git and this time uh, I'll just confirm it and then we'll just hit pull. So this will pull all the latest changes from the git. And as you can see that the latest commit is pulled now. I'm just still gonna hit this sync with remote and i'm hoping that this will work so i'm just gonna hit read apply and as i said you can check the log from here so let's see now it started the production build so if you see it's also now checking all the linting and validity of the types so this is really important what uh, that doesn't happen when you do in uh, local build in most of the times and especially if you are using on nextjs or typescript related project uh, this is really essential that you do that now as you see i think there are some typescript issue in the page.tsx as it has found out now it's not something my local development have shown me so i think i have just i have to just go back and fix that and i'll come back again so now i have fixed hopefully the uh, type issue and i have used the ai windsurf uh, editor uh, and their cascade feature now i will actually uh, cover a more about this editor uh, in more details like a crash tutorial because i really find this uh, ai tool and this editor uh, astonishing and it actually created a lot of uh, code for me so i'm just gonna push it and just like before we will go to git and we will pull the changes i can see that it's fixed that and then we'll try a redeployment and hopefully this time it will work let's see just so now finally it has deployed as you can see um, it took a little bit of back and forth fix because there was some error that was coming but now finally it has deployed as you can see and now what we can do is just go to the website so that's the domain so we'll just go there and hopefully it'll come up and there you go so this app is basically going to be live hopefully in a few days or weeks as i'm building um this one as part of the SAS course as I've told you as well so if you want to be part of this course and you want to learn how to do all this stuff uh, and this is by the way not just like a b2c app this have partners and everything like a b2b interface and stuff which i have also talked in a lot more details in our SAS weekly meetup so if you want to check out the meetup recording go to the community and have a look and if you want just buy the course because we are also opening up some earning opportunities through this application through partnership as you can see so i have again discussed in a lot more details uh, in the SaaS mastermind within the community so go to the community check the learning tab and have a look at the recording so yeah that's all uh, as part of this video i think in the next video i'm going to show you how to do this deployment in a production settings like uh, in a real world uh, just to make it live as part of the coolify course that i have launched last week so yeah subscribe to the channel and stay tuned and take care and i'll see you on to the next one bye